Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? We've talked about how vinyl records in recent years have seen a massive resurgence. But the question is, will the same hold true for the cassette? Okay, so I suppose a bit of a history lesson is in order in order to put this whole thing properly into context. The cassette tape, or more properly known as the compact cassette, was released in the early 1960s by Philips. It was originally designed to be a dictation format, meaning you'd have people at companies like executives and managers and stuff who weren't really all that great at typing, and they needed to send letters and other correspondence. So so instead of trying to hack and slash their way through the typewriter, instead they would simply dictate what they wanted the letter to contain to a tape recorder and then take that tape, stick it in an inner office envelope and send it off to a large group of people whose job was basically to transcribe those tapes to letters and other correspondence. Now, as time went on, the quality of cassettes increased and they ended up being a more convenient and reliable alternative to other recording formats like reel-to-reel -reel and eight-track tapes. But until the mid-1980s, the cassette didn't really have that recording market entirely to itself. In fact, vinyl records still outsold it by a significant margin. But what ultimately pushed the cassette ahead, at least for a while, was arguably due to a single product the Sony Walkman. In 1979, it was released and kicked off a revolution in portable music. Those other formats, vinyl records, reel-to-reel, A-track, weren't terribly portable. Some of them due to physical reasons of like the way they operated, right? You can't really carry around a record player and expect it to not skip or damage your records. And reel-to-reel -reel was bulky and unwieldy, and 8-track never really took off that dramatically to begin with. So the small size and robust nature of the compact cassette really lent itself well to portability. And that's really the big thing that it had, especially over vinyl records. It was compact and reliable. The mechanism was robust. It was very well contained. It was convenient. It just fit in this nice little package. You didn't really have any external moving parts, kind of like you would with a record player. It was a truly portable music format, really for the first time. So cassettes allowed consumers to do something that wasn't easily done before, and that is take their music with them, but it also did another thing, and that is it allowed them to record their own music. Yeah, you could with reel-to-reel, -reel, but the cassette was so compact and well thought out that it was pretty much a no-brainer to be able to record onto it. And so not only were pre-recorded tapes being sold, like with, you know, commercial full albums on them, but a large number of cassette sales were that of just blank tapes for home recording. And so as time went on, many, many more cassette decks became capable of recording from various sources. And this went on to spawn the rise and concept of the mixtape, where instead of necessarily listening to an entire album end to end, you could pick just the songs you wanted and put them in whatever order you wanted to create your own custom mix of music. Not just for your own use, but to trade them with others, to get other people engaged in some of the music that you listen to. It spawned a major cultural shift in the way that we listen to and consumed music. And this was all in the mid 1980s. But in addition to the Walkman, we then started seeing cassette decks show up in other products, specifically boom boxes and car stereos. Previously, those two types of products were largely limited to simply receiving radio signals. 
8-track tried for a while in cars, but again, that wasn't that successful of a format, and because of its lack of convenience, reel-to-reel -reel never really worked in either of those scenarios terribly well either. So cassettes were really the first time that the mass market had easy access to its own music when it wanted to listen to it while they were on the go, regardless of what activity they were engaging in. So you've got personal music like the Walkman, put on a pair of headphones. You've got boom boxes where you're walking around but want to share your music with others. And then now you've got it in the car. Of course, there were home recording decks as well, and people generally tended to have more than one cassette deck, so that also helped spawn the popularity of the, t of the cassette tape. I mean, when it's a ubiquitous format like that, and you can use it in multiple places for multiple purposes, well, it's no surprise that towards the end of the 80s, cassettes were at the peak of their sales. While they quickly surpassed and overtook sales of vinyl, it didn't last terribly long. By 1990, CDs became the dominant format, at least for playback, and sales skyrocketed even way past that of tape. CDs overcame really two major limiting factors, I feel, in cassette tapes. First is lack of random access, and the second is sound quality. With that random access part, if you've ever used a cassette, you probably immediately know what I'm talking about. With CDs and even with vinyl records, if you want to skip a song or replay a song, it's as easy as pressing the back and forward buttons or just lifting and moving the needle. With cassettes, you have to fast forward and rewind. And the vast majority of cassette decks didn't have the ability to automatically stop at the next song or at the beginning of the previous one. So it was always this game of trial and error, fast forward or rewinding for a few seconds, hitting stop, hitting play, seeing where you were, rinse, repeat. And then the same thing with if you want to just start over with the tape, maybe you listen, for a few songs on it, but you want to then go back to the beginning and listen to it again, you have to wait while it rewinds or fast forwards through the entire thing. There was absolutely no random access to the tape. And then the other thing was sound quality, which we'll talk about a bit more, but vinyl records and CDs offered a much better, more hi-fi type of experience. Now, Given the fact that cassette did so well during the 80s, clearly sound quality wasn't the most important thing to consumers, which is a sentiment that we saw echoed again later, beginning in the early 2000s with the rise of the MP3 era. Convenience is really what kind of trumps it all, but in general, the CD promised better sound and more convenience at the beginning of the 90s, and that's why the market largely started switching that way. So cassettes generally only had dominance for 10 to 15 years, and then they started getting overshadowed by other formats. But during their reign, they were absolutely the king. So that kind of brings us to today. In 2010, only 21,000 cassettes were sold in the United States. The format was more or less dead. There's been major growth since then though. In the US, in 2017, there were 174,000 cassettes sold. And that 174,000 number was a 35% increase over that of the previous year when it was around 120-ish thousand for 2016. So if you look at the graphs and check out the numbers, there's been a major spike in the uptake of cassettes again these days. So the question is, why is that getting driven? What's causing this major bump in cassette sales? Well, I think it has to do with the generational gap. And a lot of it also mirrors what's been going on with vinyl. So you look at vinyl and its rise in repopularity, I guess you could say, really kicked off about 10 years ago. And those buying it since then and now, largely that demographic is of people who are in their 30s and 40s. And they're ones who grew up 
with that format. They grew up listening to and using vinyl records. So, of course, they're going to be nostalgic about that format, just like with a lot of other retro technology video games we've talked about several times. You reach that certain age, nostalgia starts to pick up, and when that nostalgia starts to grow in you, you're at a point in your life where you're a bit more established in your career, you started to make more money, you have a little bit maybe more time for hobbies, you've kind of settled down perhaps in your life a bit, you're not out partying all night and everything, maybe like you were in your 20s. So you've got some free time and some free spending money, so that nostalgia hits you and you get back into it again, and myself included. I've got a growing vinyl collection once again because in the 80s, that's largely what I listened to. In fact, while I have used cassettes during that era, I never really bought all that many pre-recorded tapes. For me, it was mostly blank tapes that I would use for mixtapes or recording CDs and vinyl records that I owned onto tape so I could listen to them on the go. Now, in the mid-90s, my tape deck died and I realized that there was a much better format out there and I switched to that, but that's a topic for another day. Anyway, so we saw that resurgence in vinyl really started getting kicked off by this particular generation of people who were born in, let's say, the 70s and early 80s who grew up with vinyl wanted to revisit it. I suspect that's what's going on with cassettes now, is you've got really kind of the next generation, the millennials, people who were born and grew up in the mid 80s to early 90s who didn't really have that much experience with vinyl records, cassettes were their jam as kids and teenagers. And so now they're getting interested in cassettes again because they're starting to reach their 30s and you know mid 30s. They're starting to settle down and get money, you know, that kind of thing. So that nostalgia is really pushing things forward. The question beyond why are they taking off is also will cassettes ever reach the same level of sales as vinyl has seen with its resurgence? That one I think is going to depend on a lot of factors, not just now, but potentially in the future, changing tastes, that sort of thing. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure whether cassettes will really reach that same milestone as vinyl records have, or whether it will always stay a more niche type of format. There are definitely pros and cons working for and against that format. Working for that format, taking off again, is perhaps one of the biggest ones. It's quick and relatively cheap to spin up production of a tape. I mean, you look at the way that cassette tapes and vinyl records are manufactured in like the pre-recorded kind of sense. When you want to manufacture a vinyl record, you have to obviously master your original album. You have to take it to a shop that specializes in creating masters for vinyl, so they need to cut that master record. From that master record, they then need to turn and create the stampers, basically the molds that they'll make all of the production records off of, and those are cut out of metal. And then they need to start the production line where they actually make and stamp the vinyl, press a label onto the vinyl. And then on top of that, they need to print and manufacture the cardboard sleeves that the vinyl records go into, you know, with the colorful artwork and everything on it. So there's a much more, there's much more work involved in bringing a vinyl record into being. And while it can be cost effective if you're producing them in volume, right? Once you've gotten past that initial investment and in spinning up production, it can be less expensive per unit to actually produce those final records. The thing that tape offers though, is tape has very low startup costs because effectively all of the tapes used for pre-recorded music start out as blank tapes, right? All tape is tape. The actual magnetic tape 
is really the same whether it's going into a pre-recorded cassette or a blank one. The only difference is the pre-recorded cassettes have audio recorded to them first, really in the most basic sense. So effectively, if you wanted to do a production run of pre-recorded cassettes, all you're doing is just buying a whole bunch of blanks and then running them through a duplication machine. There are pros and cons to this too. The cassettes themselves are a bit more expensive per unit because there's physically more to them. It's not just a chunk of PVC that's getting stamped, it's a manufactured product. And there's also the time aspect to it too. You simply can't churn out as many cassettes pre-recorded as you can with vinyl. You can stamp a vinyl record in a matter of seconds, but it takes minutes, if not an hour or so, to record a pre-recorded cassette based on what kind of equipment you're using and what kind of quality you're going after. The best quality cassettes are ones that are recorded basically in real time. Effectively, you've got a factory doing what a lot of people did, myself included, at home, where you're more or less pressing record on the tape deck and play on your original source, whether that's a CD or a, you know, a vinyl record or whatever, and waiting for that process to finish. In its heyday in the mass market era of the 80s, of course, tapes were dubbed much faster than that, and there are pros and cons to that approach as well. But basically, production of tapes is slower and more expensive per unit, but way, way lower startup costs. This definitely has some interesting effects. What we've seen with vinyl records, for the most part, at least in my own experience, when I've been out at stores looking at new vinyl and new cassettes that are available, the vinyl that's available, pressed brand new, and I'm not talking used you know, records from like the 80s that are just still sticking around, I'm talking brand new pressed ones. A lot of that vinyl is going to be more the mass market kind of stuff, either reissues of classic albums. For example, Michael Jackson's Thriller, which is one of the probably most popular recordings of all time, they're still making vinyl copies of that, but that's a record from the early 80s. A lot of other kind of vintage music from that same time period is really popular on vinyl now as a reissue. And then the other new music that's coming out on vinyl is gonna be some more of the mass release type of stuff, like the top 40s, just the most popular, most kind of mass market commercial music that you can find. Yes, there are some places that cater to doing production runs of vinyl for less popular albums, for indie artists, that kind of thing, but there is definitely a threshold cost-wise to whether they want to do that. So it's not as common as it could be. But you look at cassettes, cassettes because of their very low cost to entry could actually be a really good option for indie artists and smaller musicians, smaller artists that want to get their music out in a physical format that would be too expensive to print CDs or press final records for cassettes could be a really good option for them. So I think one of the pros is that we may see a better diversity of indie music, less well-known new music coming out on cassette than we ever could on vinyl records. So that's something that could potentially drive tape sales for those who maybe aren't that terribly interested in tape, but want a physical copy of some indie artist that they've just absolutely fallen in love with, that, that might be the ticket to get tape to continue on its growth. Another thing is it still has the same advantages over vinyl. Vinyl records are relatively fragile and they're not portable and tape generally fixes both of those things. I mean, tapes aren't necessarily indestructible themselves, but there's less that can go wrong and they're more foolproof in terms of getting the general public to be able to play them, right? Yes, we've seen turntables that are pre-balanced and generally really easy for people to use, but it still takes an errant tap of the needle to put a big scratch across your vinyl record. So you've, let's just say, uh, convenience is still a major factor. Uh, you've, you've got people 
buying into cassettes because they just remember how easy they were when they were kids. You literally press the eject button, you drop the tape in there, you close the door and you hit play. That, that's it. It's, there's not a whole lot else that you need to worry about when it comes to tape. Yeah, occasionally, yeah, maybe your deck will eat the tape, but I don't remember that happening very often. To be honest, from from my days of using tape, I know it did happen to some people and some people more than others, but generally cassettes were really reliable. And so that's another major factor they've got going for them. And then there's still the portability angle. You can't really carry around a record player in a boombox or in a Walkman type of thing. Tape still wins. I mean, the same arguments in favor of tape back in the 80s, they hold true, at least against vinyl. And then the other major thing going for tapes is that there are still a lot of tape decks around. Arguably, there are more tape decks around today than record players. I think when we saw vinyl records taper off, a lot of people got out of it. Now, I these are numbers that I still have yet to look up and they're kind of hard to find, but I think the lowest low for vinyl records maybe wasn't nearly as low as the lowest low for cassette sales, if that makes any sense. Like when vinyl was at its lowest part, it was still selling more, more copies than cassettes were at their lowest point. But I think a lot of that also translates into the people that are into vinyl, at least during that era, were generally really into vinyl. And so all the people who just casually used vinyl in the 70s and 80s, when they got out of it, they just got out of it. And all their records either went in the trash or they got sold at garage sales. The record players are probably long gone. So in terms of like quality playback equipment, really well manufactured parts, I suspect there are more cassette decks out there that meet that criteria than there were vintage vinyl record players. And the other thing going for that is all of those cassette decks that were higher quality, they're going to be newer than the really high quality vinyl record players, especially since vinyl started tapering off in sales in the mid 80s, whereas the mid 80s is when cassettes were really taking off. So arguably some of the best decks were the ones produced in let's say 1989 through the early 90s, whereas maybe some of the best vinyl record players were the ones produced in the late 70s and early 80s. So you've got almost a decade of age there of cassette decks that have survived, but also stayed in better shape. It takes less work to get them up and running again. So those who want to get into cassettes again have maybe better selection in terms of if they wanna buy a vintage deck, which one they can buy, and then there's gonna be less work to maybe get it up and running again. Fewer replacement parts they need to, to pick up, less maintenance, that sort of thing. But of course, there are still cons and negatives that are going to potentially impede cassette sales going forward, or at least maybe give people reason for pause and maybe keep cassettes from reaching the same massive, kind of reuptake by the general public that vinyl is seen. The first, of course, is they're more expensive to make in quantity than vinyl. We covered all of those financial aspects to it. Yes, there's lower cost to entry, but each tape costs more to actually make. So are we going to see those kind of top 40 albums, the, the real mass market you know, commercialized music, not the indie stuff, are we really gonna see that make it back on tape at the same level that we've seen it on vinyl? I don't know. If the demand is there, maybe, but then you get into kind of a catch-22 type of a thing, so that remains to be seen. Also, again, to the negative side of it, the best players are the old ones. I've read that there's only really one manufacturer of cassette mechanisms these days. I don't think that manufacturer is producing high quality units. In general, all of the new cassette players that we've seen, like brand new manufactured ones, are going into inexpensive products. They're inexpensive boomboxes, inexpensive Walkman type of units. 
Um, even some home decks that I've seen reviews on generally, while they can be, you know, in the hundreds of dollars, they generally use these low quality cassette mechanisms. Now, whether there really is only one manufacturer left making cassette decks, I don't know if that's entirely true, but I can tell you there's relatively few, if any, that are still making mechanisms at all. And generally, they're going to be the less expensive mechanisms. So if you want to really get back into tape, you've got to buy a vintage unit. There aren't any brand new, really high quality options widely available anymore, like there are with record players. We've seen with the resurgence of vinyl, a whole bunch of really high quality, expensive turntables come back out on the market. Arguably, turntables are less expensive and simpler to manufacture than cassette decks. So that could be a barrier to entry to people who maybe really want to relive the heyday of cassette and they remember, oh, I had this really high quality deck and high quality tapes and all that. They could look at it again now and go, oh gosh, if I really want to enjoy tape and get the most sound quality and everything that I can out of it, I've got to go on eBay and spend several hundred bucks on a deck and fix it if it's broken and do the maintenance and all that on it. It could turn some people off, at least the more kind of hardcore collector types who would really want to jump back in with both feet. For the casual listeners, maybe they don't care, but it is definitely going to be a factor. And related to that, there's still relatively poor sound quality coming out of cassettes compared to not just vintage formats like vinyl and arguably the CD, but also compared to now. MP3s and streaming music still generally sounds better than most cassettes. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat here in that there were multiple types of cassettes and compact cassettes can sound really good, but you've got to use the right tape material and the right playback equipment to get the most out of it. And unfortunately, both of those these days are in short supply. There are very few manufacturers left of the actual tape media and the vast majority of the type of tape that they're putting out is the least expensive, most basic ferric type tape. This is what most mass pre-recorded tapes were recorded to back in the 80s, but it's going to be the lowest quality and coupled to that, apparently Dolby, which was the leader in noise reduction to try and make those ferric tapes sound better, no longer licenses out that technology to be included in new tape decks. So if new tape decks don't include the noise reduction technology, then new tape recordings being made are less likely to include it because people can't use it. So you're going to see an overall kind of loss in sound quality out of tapes. They're not going to sound as good as they used to or could. There are other two types of tape material. There's chrome and metal both of which require a deck that's capable of playing them back. Now, some of the new decks coming out can play chrome tapes. I don't believe there are any brand new decks that can play metal. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. But generally, if you're looking at this from a, you know, a millennial who has gotten rid of all of their cassette stuff from back when they were a kid, they want to get back into it again. They're starting from scratch and they just want to go to the store and buy everything they need. They're arguably getting the worst quality cassette experience that they could versus spending the time and money to go and get the best quality that they possibly could get when tape was at its peak. I think vinyl records are generally going to give you better sound quality right off the bat, even with a relatively inexpensive turntable than you would from cassettes, right? The fidelity on a vinyl record is there regardless of what playback equipment you use for it. There weren't multiple types of vinyl records, some of which you know were low quality and some were high quality and there was a sound difference in between them. I mean, yeah, there were physical differences in terms of like record thickness and that kind of stuff, but you're getting more into splitting hairs type of territory. Generally, if you bought a vinyl record, you could get the same, you, know, you could play that same record on any 
piece of equipment, whether it was a $100 turntable or a $1,000 turntable, and that vinyl record contained the best quality audio that you could get. It only took the player really to unlock it. Whereas with tapes, it takes two to tango, as they say, so the tape quality has to be high and the player quality has to be high. So long-winded way of basically saying, Tapes, brand new these days, don't sound as good as they used to and don't sound as good as other formats still available today. Now, maybe the flip side of that is perhaps there's a charm to that loss in sound quality. Perhaps there's some something about it, something about that kind of warm, potentially thin sound where you've got the noise in the background, maybe, you know, the hiss that pops and crackles, that kind of stuff that you could sometimes get from tape without noise reduction applied. Maybe that's the charm. And arguably some of that could be the same charm that's propelling vinyl records forward. People remember that type of sound. It wasn't quite so pristine as you would get out of CDs and MP3s, that sort of thing. So maybe that relatively, I guess you could say lo-fi kind of experience is the thing that's pushing tape forward. That could definitely be a factor. But really, you also ultimately like with all the pros to cassettes from back in the 80s with the durability and convenience, you also have the same negative aspects to them now, largely the lack of random access. Uh, People are used to instant gratification these days. They want to be able to play a song and they just reach for their phone, tap a button and go and that's it. With tape, you got to wait for it. And that random access is something that even vinyl record collectors today still get to enjoy. You want to play a song, you can do so pretty quickly with a vinyl record, just drop it on the turntable, put the needle on whatever track you want and you're done with tape. Well, you may have to fast forward or rewind and then play that game of trying to find the song for a while. And then there's also the fact that while tapes in the 80s were really, really convenient from a portability perspective, they still totally lose out to what's capable in the digital era. So while tapes weren't really the best home listening format, and they were really good as a portable format back in the 80s. Today, they're still not really the best home format. And one wonders how well they would do as a portable format, considering that most everybody's already carrying a smartphone and can have tons and tons of music at their fingertips right there, and you're already carrying it. So. Cassettes overall, I think, have a bit of an uphill battle. You know, like we talked about that growth between cassettes over the years and vinyl records over the years. And you may look at that number of 174,000 tapes being sold in 2017 and go, wow, that's actually a really big number considering it's tape, right? And it is, but it's nowhere near encroaching on vinyl record territory during 2017, again, just in the US, while cassettes sold 174,000 units, vinyl records sold over 14 million. So we'll see. We'll just have to see where things go, what aspects of tape people pick up on, whether they really pick up on them or if it's a shorter term type of fad. These are things we'll find out in the years to come because cassette is really only at the beginning of its rise. It took 10 years or so for vinyl records to reach the point that they're at now coming off of one of their kind of low sales marks. So the next maybe three, four years will be really telling for where cassettes end up going. But I am, of course, curious as to your thoughts. Were you really big into cassettes during the day? Or like me, did you really use them more as kind of that mixtape and just for fun home recording type of format? Did you buy a whole ton of pre-recorded tapes or was another format like vinyl or CD really what filled that gap for you? I'm just curious as to your thoughts. Same thing with buying tapes now. Have you gotten into it? Are you going for all the vintage type of stuff to get the best quality you can? Or are you going after the brand new mass market type of stuff? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you're interested in audio only versions of these podcasts, I have them available as plain MP3 files for download 
for Patreon supporters at all contribution levels. As little as a dollar a month gets you access. It helps support the channel. There is RSS feed support. So if you sign up, you get a private URL. You throw it into the podcast player of your choice. And these episodes usually go live a few days before they show up on YouTube. So just something to think about. Anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThisDoesNotComp. And as always, thanks for watching.